Okay, so thanks uh, to everybody for joining today. And to jump off, uh, the first thing we wanted to do is uh, talk about a mod reward program. We're thinking about basically like uh, stepping up the mod features for people to be able to like help curate uh, content in hubs and then creating like a reward structure behind that. So that way it actually makes sense for people to spend time uh, like doing some of this extra effort stuff. And just as context, during our last sync, um, we were talking about like moderators in general on Research Hub, and Brian like strongly uh, suggested that uh, like moderators are pretty much like our earliest adopters, and like should share in any future success that Research Hub has. And like, I think as context, like structuring these rewards, part of that is to almost have like the moderator team be able to scale as like a secondary layer of research hubs team where it's like not quite like actively employees of research hub but moderators are essentially getting a salary in research coin in order to like fulfill some like basic like um responsibilities for caretaking a hub so we've thought about this a little bit and like how to scale this program and so Kobe has like a V1 proposal of sort of what we're thinking the responsibilities would be and then how the rewards uh, to compensate for that would be structured. So what we'd like to do is kind of uh, bounce these ideas off of you all to see like, like, is this even something you think would be motivational? And then on top of that, is it something that can like scale to eventually, I think we'd like to have like five to 10 moderators of every hub almost like an editorial board type thing where there's sort of like, like, um, I guess like community representatives who like try and like, um, govern each hub in accordance with whatever the culture of their specific subfield is. So that that's kind of like the long-term vision. And Kobe has a little bit of a presentation where we would love to hear some of your feedback. So Kobe, do you want to take it away? Uh, yeah, sure. <clears throat> Let me share my screen. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Yep, looks good. <clears throat> okay, cool. Um, so yeah, basically, we're thinking of um, some kind of an incentive program to to achieve what I what I see is like two primary goals. So there is uh, one goal of uh, <clears throat> you know, there's many goals, but the main two is like growing the community. So basically, increasing the active daily contributors for each hub. Um, I consider each hub to be a community that uh, each moderator would like be responsible for. And we wanna grow each one of these communities. And then number two is curate quality. So more quality posts, uh, quality papers, uh, discussions. So th these are two overarching goals um, that led to kind of like uh, a little bit of this brainstorm. Okay. And with one other piece of context too, is that um, one thing we've noticed on Research Hub is whenever we have some event where we get a lot of new users or a lot of new attention, there's kind of like this uh, overwhelming wave of spam that comes with uh, that new wave of attention. And the ML tool that we use to try and cope with that is not sophisticated enough to do a good job. And so uh, part of the solution, we think we just need people in order to like help like maintain like a high quality environment, even when there are like waves of like low quality content coming in due to like recent attention. So that's kind of like the um, originating like issue where we're like, oh, we really need to like build out and develop some of the moderator tools. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and uh, until like we we build out this technology to be quite sophisticated, we really need the help of, uh, of you guys, of moderators to help us out. Um, so we're thinking that each hub is going to basically, um, you know, obviously have like a, a main moderator responsible for each hub and on the hub page, we would note somewhere on the hub page that uh, so-and-so is responsible for moderating this hub. So for example, on the psychology hub, you would visit the hub's homepage and you'll see like 
Anton Lebed, like uh, is moderating the sub, something like this. And now, <clears throat> as far as like the incentive program is concerned, each mod would earn a base RIC salary plus uh, some performance-based uh, bonus. So let's quickly run through what we think the uh, base RIC salary um, looks like. So basically, it's going to be like a salary paid for each mod for the basic responsibilities. So I know there is like a bunch of responsibilities we, Joyce and Pat and everyone talked to you about. So we're not going to cover those uh, in detail here, but we're thinking, brainstorming here, that these responsibilities will include something like attending weekly community calls, uh, maintaining a clean hub homepage. So something like, you know, making sure within reasonable like effort and time that you can invest that there is no spam paper showing up in the homepage, no spam posts. Uh, papers that show up in the homepage have um, clear abstracts, right? So no like, uh, I don't know, like two word abstracts or like some weird characters and things like that. Um, and we're also thinking that um, as a moderator, you'll be responsible for, uh, you know, submitting X number of papers per week and uh, maybe creating Y comments per week um, as well. So it's kind of like what you're doing now, but putting it more into like, uh, I guess, uh, on paper. So I'll pause here. Any ideas or thoughts? I have a question. So basically, you are uh, you are merging the power user program with the moderator program, correct? Yeah, pretty much. And like in theory, a lot of these things will kind of like hopefully scale the power user program, where we can kind of experiment with like oh new rewards cause new behaviors, which help like research hub or even like specific hubs grow in different ways. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, pretty much. Uh, another question, what about papers that have tags in multiple hubs? So, for example, if it's both psychology and longevity, who who gets to clean up the paper, the psychology mode or the longevity mode? So this is something we've thought about, but we haven't like come up with a good solution yet. I, I even think I've seen like some AI tools that can read a paper and classify it based on it'll be like like. 78% biochemistry, but also like 18% like pharmacology or something like that. So there's potential to just have some type of like, you know, objective like classifier. Um, I, do you have any good suggestions? Because I think this is kind of a, a difficult thing. I mean, responsibility wise, it's tough but it also we need to figure out what, what how would the rewards be distributed right so you i see you have pro, you probably will propose that the partial upvote bonus will get to the to the mod so let's say it's it's you know in two sections will it be split equally or will it just be double the reward yeah very good thoughts uh sorry go ahead this is kind of like a departure from how our hubs currently work, but we could also have the same paper in two hubs and then the mods would earn rewards for the discussion. Like I know in Reddit, sometimes it'll be like, Hey, you mm. see this post, but this was also posted in subreddit X, whatever. And so we could kind of have two entities where I guess they're competing, not ideal, but could be a short term. Solution. Yeah. Uh, well, that's how you say it's a departure, but isn't it the, how it, exactly how it is now? It can be, right, a part of two hubs. Oh, I'm, I'm saying like each each paper would be a separate entity in each hub. So like, oh, like yeah, separate entities where like if you upvoted one, it wouldn't count towards the other. Well, that's not ideal in my yeah. Opinion. I don't think it's ideal because especially on Reddit, the communities are actually very different. Mm -hmm. And so, like, in our case, it is a little bit trickier. That is a good point. I haven't thought about that. And you're spreading the activity fee even, even more in that Right, case. right, right. In a perfect yeah. way, having it be, like, even further lotteried out. Maybe, yeah. But yeah, Joyce, maybe what we can do here is, like, we push in the UI 
like the major hub you know you can have multiple tags on it but then like someone needs to select like this is under psychology versus like um what's the other field uh like uh longevity totally and like Ooh. yeah like someone just needs to make that distinction it'll show up in both places it can show up in both places but then like the rewards will go to the number one hub that's mm -hmm. listed what if you what if you change UI a little bit so when you select the hubs it will be two questions first we'll be like what is the primary hub you think mm -hmm. and all yeah. additional ones right 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 we, yeah we split it to primary hub additional hubs yeah mm. yeah I like that that's actually a really good idea the only challenge would be like what do we do with um, pre-existing content but I think we can figure that out um yeah and uh, in our paradigm well we probably i've been thinking like for a little bit of time like the time like how do you guys feel about a time-based filter here on like because if we're just going on a time-based filter like when something was uploaded um it kind of sorts itself out to an extent kobe where like yeah, we have to figure it out later, but like in the feed, you don't see those papers, you know? So then it becomes a little bit harder to find. So that's, yeah. What, what do you mean, Pat, by uh, time-based? So you're thinking like, show me- I don't know. Let's say, let's say there's a bunch of conversation on an old paper that was posted. Right. That should go to the top, right? Like even though it was posted like, I don't know, a year ago, Mm -hmm. now it's hot it should float at the top i think mm -hmm. um, because people are talking about it now mm. so like yeah like right now our, our thing is very heavily time weighted so even if that happens like someone starts talking a bunch of people start talking about one paper from like a year ago it won't show up in the feed because it's so long ago yeah yeah i see what you're saying um yeah m maybe maybe it will work i think it uh yeah, I guess it depends on the second part, which is the mod performance based Sorry. bonus. Sorry, could you just also leave the feedback for moderation? Also, like you can detect uh, when the first moderator starts editing a certain paper. And so basically, you just see uh, what part of the community is that specific individual moderating. And yeah, you reward them. And you would actually incentivize moderators to kind of rush as soon as possible and do edits as well uh, so they get rewarded so that seems kind of I, I um, like i was thinking like moderators even papers you know be like oh you know plant a flag in it this is psychology but i, th I think you're right dragon like the first one to do cool stuff or, mm. or in the moderators who have done the most stuff so you could be competing back and forth mm -hmm. That creates the, the, the whole, this shift makes it more apparent that uh, the hub system itself can be a little bit complicated and subjective, right? Because some hubs don't even exist right now. There is no developmental hub right now, right? So we can't, there is no specific tag for this kind of research. But someone might ask to introduce it, right? So what will happen if there was a set of hubs on the paper, let's say psychology, neuroscience, psychiatry, but someone comes in and adds another hub, or maybe even the authors themselves show up and say, hey, this is not psychology, this is more, you know, biochemistry or something. Would mm -hmm. it, would it res retrospectively redirect the RSC rewards? To, to the other hub? Um, I, I, it depends. I think like um, you gotta think about it a little bit more. I don't this, think so, but not sure. So I, I have one more. Sense. Sorry, Pat. Let me just say yeah. Go ahead, Joyce. Yeah, go ahead, Joyce. Yeah. What if so? What if we capped the number of hubs at three for any given paper, and then we're we give out three RSC for every upvote, and it's going to each, you know, hub, basically, like. Like everybody gets credit, maximum of three for every paper, um, and you can do less if you don't think three fit. What if you only have one hub? Does it funnel all that's, three RSC? 
Yeah, just or no, just one. If it's just, just one hub, hub, just one. Yeah. Okay. So like an incentive to tag more hubs, but. Hmm. Hmm. I now have an incentive to stretch things a little bit and add the tag psychology into all papers. <laughs> yeah, totally. yeah, you probably could, honestly. But but it, is that even the worst thing, though? Because then we just get another set of eyes who wants to keep it high quality. So mm. like there would just be a lot of competition to be a mod in a hub that gets tagged in lots of things. Do you, do you see it as a mod in this uh, section should only upload paper? papers from that hub or from any hub so so we're thinking to give the mod like an incentive to create high quality content in their hub just because, in the mod. okay yeah I, I guess we should talk about the next piece too to yeah share. but but before that yeah. i got I, I, you pat lou i interrupted you what, what yeah i got a quick yeah maybe we need to rethink the hubs thing a little like our hub structure a little bit mm -hmm. where each paper can only go under one hub and then we have tags where like then we can tag different stuff i agree <laughs> yeah like if we look at archive i think every paper is under like one category and so like i think the majority of preprint servers are like that currently they're they're all like that like by archive, right. archive even these osf preprints like each server is divided into a different field so right I, I agree. I think one hub might be the solution. Yeah. We just do one hub. Thing, like having yeah. one uh, like main hub section, whatever, is that a good thing? It's going to be gigantic. Imagine the biology hub. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it'd be I massive. Mean, but then we just have more mods in there, right? And, and we can also like, maybe maybe the biology hub wants to split off into the developmental biology hub. And there's yeah. like people who want it right and then it splits yeah yeah hmm. yeah but then you're creating this entire problem with hierarchies of, of hubs mm -hmm. it seems that something mm -hmm. having a more flat structure uh like like uh, stack exchange tags like there is no like main tag that is actually collecting all the other smaller tags like they're all equal uh level and mm -hmm. you just then have experts for a particular tag and like that's it so you like literally avoid the entire problem of nesting and uh, like overburdening certain hubs tags uh, with like a lot of activity instead of just introducing totally flat hierarchy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are good, very good thoughts that everyone here has. Um, yeah, we'll definitely think through it more. Um, and we'll probably talk about it more next week as well. Um, so Just yeah, one let's... Thing before we move on, uh, maybe you should. Uh, I, I don't know if you agree, but uh, maybe you can add a bunch, uh, sub, some responsibilities for the mods related to the pre moderation. So some content I think in Research Hub shouldn't be easy to change for just whatever users, namely the abstract, the title, maybe the hubs on the yeah. paper. Well, maybe if a, if a user tries to change anything, then it will go into the moderator's inbox or something first before it's approved. Then it can appear. Or at least let the moderator know. I think right now, um, Pat, uh, do we have some some kind of a reputation minimum associated with like editing an abstract? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay, yeah, no, I think it's a good point. So either like uh, we'll notify the mod or, yeah. or like add it to the queue or something like that. Um, yeah, let, let the offers and the submitter, the initial submitter freely change stuff around the paper, but everyone else should, should have it approved. Yeah, uh, I think the Wikipedia model is like anyone can edit, but the mods get notified immediately. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I signed up for an account one time. I just edited something, immediately took place. But someone reverted it within like five minutes. Totally. Yeah, it's gone immediately. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's a good call out. Um, OK, so for the sake of time, I'm going to move to the next section. So the mod performance-based bonus. Um, so basically, like it's got a few elements. So the first element is just um, basically like we refer to it as lottery in the past. So 
basically just distribution of upvotes. So what we do is we add up the total number of upvotes per week on papers, posts, hypotheses, whatever assets we have. So let's say it's like a hundred. Then we um, associate like RSC value uh, per vote. It doesn't have to be one, it can be anything. Uh, but so now you have like a hundred RSC that can be distributed. And we're gonna distribute this um, RSC delta. So, right, because every week it's gonna be like a new, new delta, new change. Um, and 15% we're thinking will go towards the moderator of the hub. 55% uh, will go towards the author. And then the, the remaining 30% will be distributed to um, people who made comments by weight. So basically a comment who has more upvotes will receive more RSC within this like 30% uh, allocation. Um, so yeah, let me pause here, so get your thoughts. Yeah, and you say that there, the calculating period will be like around one week. So after a week, you will take a look at how many upvotes there are, which one is the most upvoted comment, and then you will redistribute, or is it just is it going online? Um, yeah, so it's per week, so it resets every week. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so basically if like it was 10 votes on one paper and only the Delta is only one upvote for this week, it's uh -huh. only one thing to be re distributed, kind of. Yeah, um, now, now the question is, uh, me and Joyce were chatting earlier, do you guys think it's a good idea, <clears throat> given our goals here that we defined above, do you think it's a good idea to reward the submitter of a paper in any way? Yeah, maybe. absolutely. <laughs> uh, because if authors are still not uh, on the network, right? Like you definitely want to reward people that are bringing the content. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe there is going to be some allocation we do to the submitter. We're thinking that even though the author may not be in the network, what's going to happen is there's going to be like a pot created on the side for the author when they do join the network. So that that 55% would not like basically go to the moderator or the comments. It would just be saved for the author on the side. Uh, what's my incentive as a community member to post any other paper besides like the ones that I've authored? So the incentive, Kobe and I were talking about this, is um, to be the first one to add a comment. So in theory, it's like pretty easy to add a paper. Like, uh, you know, I find like if I really wanted to, I could add like a couple hundred a day. Um, it's a lot harder to add a comment. So if you post a paper, like being the first one to say, hey, here's why I posted this paper um, is like your best move to be able to get a piece of that 30% rather than just saying like, hey, here's some, like, hey, here's 5% just for submitting, which we could do. I'm, Kobe and I, the, the pros here yeah. are more weekly yeah. contributors, just more users, because it's really easy to post like a paper. Um, and then the cons would be having no reward for the submitter means you have to add a comment in order to get a piece. And requiring people to add a comment in order to get rewards could be better for our growth just because there's more content out there and it looks like a more active community. And, and then we could always change this in the future once we have more of an active community. That's what did you pay? I, I understand that it can be a little bit awkward to in, uh, add the initial submitter as like a permanent funnel of RSC, right? To this proportion of people who get RSC. What if you do like a flat amount, like the first 50 upvotes the paper gets, it just, it just goes to the submitter. Everything yeah. after that gets uh, divided equally. I kind of like that. That's actually a great, like, like there's a time limit to the submitters rewards because you're right. Like, like even if it was 1%, if I thought research hub was going to take off in a decade, I would immediately just go to PubMed and start submitting everything just to get a 1% finder's fee on like mm -hmm. you know, a bunch of different things. But also that might be a good thing. Like maybe those people should get rewarded for being the first person to do that. So I don't know. 
like I guess there could be a bot that's just uploading a bajillion papers a day. But mm -hmm. yeah, this mm -hmm. I don't I'm not sure what the best move is here. Yeah, uh, exactly. Some other communities are actually limiting how much you can post. So like you can actually limit the number of papers that you upload, I know, weekly uh, or I know per day. So you can actually stop the bots, but still have the actual people earning. And maybe it costs you RSC after the first five papers of the week or something. Like you need to you need to pay yeah, RSC yep, yep, yep. for the next one. Yes. Yeah, these are all good ideas. <clears throat> um okay yeah we'll talk about that i know we're running out of time here um yeah one thing we're thinking about uh as far as like an incentive is what we want to do is really for each hub we want to have as many authors that have claimed their profile so as you know we have this author claiming feature that went live uh, a while back and we want authors to claim their profile so we're thinking of incentivizing mods by referring authors to Research Hub and claim their profile. How they're going to do it, there's many different ways, uh, mostly manual, but it's up to the moderator of the hub. So it's only an idea. I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Well, that, that cold call-in, I think, needs to be a separate reward part. That's a, that's a tough tough thing to do needs to be rewarded properly yeah i think it's it's so this is a bonus thing and i like each one is uh its own thing so like you can choose to do this and if you do it then great you get a bonus it's its own thing but uh yeah that's uh, at least what we're thinking of right now i'm thinking what i'm thinking is maybe the in addition so if the offer claim the profile you don't know if they found a, a research hub by themselves or the mod invited them. So maybe you could introduce a special referral program with mods being able to generate a link that they can send mm -hmm. academics. They will ha get a hefty bonus based on that mm -hmm. because that's really hard, but really valuable. Yeah, we're thinking of, uh, you know, we have a referral program at the moment. We'll probably utilize it to uh, to do what you just talked about, Anton. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's very important to keep the distinction. Um, so that is one idea. Um, now we want to um, get more new users to the hub, uh, and the more basically the more people, the more people that I refer to each hub, the more. The more people that are active, the better it is for the hub. Um, but then again, I think this is the key thing we're looking for. So this is more important for us at this stage. So you can kind of like put this on the side. Um, so any other thoughts? I know we're at time and there's like a couple more things Joyce wanted to talk about. So I'll, yeah, just yeah. a quick comment. Uh, some of these things that depend on hubs uh, size are kind of tricky to get right because some hubs just could have smaller community. So it could mm -hmm. be kind of ungrateful rewarding people that are just part of a bigger community and they have a lot more activity. So yeah, just being careful about it. Yeah, yeah we, we thought about this a little bit and my take on it, and I know it's not going to be a popular take amongst you is you know, it's your, it can be a responsibility that the moderator can take on to grow the hub. I know that obviously like psychology is at the end of the day is gonna have more people. Like if we referred all the scientists in the world to, to all the different hubs, but since we're small enough, we're thinking that it's okay to treat things um, evenly, at least um, kind of that's the idea for the moment. Because like, if we don't, then things can get like quite complex and we're trying to keep it lightweight. Uh, so Dragon, if you have any thoughts on how we can proportionally keep it fair, uh, please let me know. And that's I do not at the time. A, uh, sorry, go Dragon. Sorry, uh, I just don't have an idea at the time. Yeah, cool. Um, one if you guys feel free to chat on Slack too. 
Okay. So one potential other bonus uh, activity that mod can do is maybe the outreach kind of. So like what Patrick is doing with uh, Reddit, right? So if if a moderator wants to create a, a topic on Reddit about one of the uploaded papers, that should be also rewarded, I think. Totally, 100%. Kobe and I chatted about this a little bit, and sometimes projects will do like uh, bounties for this. So they just open it up to the whole community and say like, hey, if anybody posts a research up paper on Reddit, like, well, you know, send us your wallet, we'll send you 50 RSC or whatever. And so there's, yeah, I, I think that's something where eventually, we, I think we'd have to be careful because we don't want to spam anything and be annoying. But um, yeah. I think there's ways that we could do that where we could get ourselves out there pretty well. That's that's why I didn't want to be like a bounty for everyone, but put just the moderators who you know will do it tastefully and you know. It's a great point. I mean, that is uh, like if they're incentivized long term, like the health of the community is more important than that short RSC payment. That's a, it's actually that's definitely something we should consider. Yeah, I agree. Cool. So uh, just to quickly move on to the other stuff. Um, so Kobe and I had a chat with Open Sound Framework. Essentially, what they want to do is really like low tech integration with us first to try and test the concept of do open scientists want token rewards for behaviors? And so uh, essentially what's going to happen is uh, they have these claim verifications on Open Science Framework preprint servers where you can, as the author, when you submit a preprint, say, yes, I pre-registered this study. Uh, yes, I have data available for others to check out. And then I forget what the third one is. But um, essentially what they want to do is recruit people from their community to go on to Research Hub and verify these pre-registration and data availability claims. So basically what will happen is they already have people who are interested in doing this. They'll like communicate on their end, send them to Research Hub. And on Research Hub, they'll read the preprint and then say, yes, like there is a pre-registration, like the link to the pre-registration is a pre-registration that describes the study that I just read. And then either leave a comment or something else that says, yes, verified this pre-registration link is good. And when that happens, the verifier earns RSC and the author earns RSC. And in theory, if the verifier says, no, this link is broken or like, no, this, I can't verify this, the information goes back to the author and the author is able to submit a new version of their preprint to OSF that has the error corrected. And then when that happens, there's more RSC. So the idea is like, like incentivize independent verification and then have the independent verification be feedback back to the author in order to make changes to improve their manuscript on OSF. So that's sort of the high level plan. Um, the questions I have for everybody here is like, if that sounds cool to you. And then two is the features that we could potentially build on our side. So in theory, we could just encourage people to leave comments. But um, Kobe has been thinking a little bit about how we could maybe like have a specific section of the paper page. Be like, hey, do you want to independently verify author claims and earn RSC? like click this box, we'll give you more instructions and like maybe make it like super straightforward on what we want you to do. So yeah, just do you think it's a cool idea? And then two, should we build some custom stuff to help make it easier on our end? It sounds interesting, definitely rewarding people for some additional work is kind of what I was at least personally hoping for that Research Hub will be going for. Uh, so I think this is a great first step. Uh, when it comes to building some additional custom stuff, uh, like if it's custom and uh, like lowers the barrier for entry, it makes uh, UX uh, nicer and smoother, definitely do it. But how high of an investment should that be? Probably as low as possible. If, if this is kind of the low tech integration, like you send, said, then if commenting system works uh, well enough, then that may be even sufficient. Uh, but if something, yeah, with a small amount of effort could lead to much better results and uh, better usability, then definitely uh, do it. Yes. Yeah, I guess uh, one question I have for people here, if you guys don't mind, take 
couple more minutes is um, I'm thinking about like who is going to be what type of user should verify like can anyone verify or can only specific people verify and how frequently can how many times can like a preprint be verified can it be verified like a hundred times I don't know um, is one sufficient not sure I wanted to get your thoughts on it um, intuitively yeah. I'm thinking of like locking it down to like is there a number of uh, verification but um, you guys let me know what you think yeah like if OSF already has a group of users willing to do that it, it, it sounds to me like they already somehow verified those users and like those are the community members that we trust and like we know that we can trust uh, so I would say that it's not up to Research Hub to figure out who can actually verify uh, the pre-registrations and the data. Uh, it's more on the side of OSF, but I might be wrong on that one. And uh, like how many times you uh, verify or not, uh, it, I also was missing the, like if there is a something missing, it seems that you aren't rewarding the verifier for investing the effort into at least confirming that there isn't anything it seems like there is definitely less work uh if the data is missing because you're just seeing that something is missing like it's missing but it's still like some time spent on their side so uh also just showing some sort of gratitude for that minuscule mm -hmm. amount of work but still present would be cool so just to clarify they have three badges right the paper can be pre-registered can have open materials and can have open data are you guys going to verify all three so during our call yesterday, uh, the focus was on pre-registrations and data, but I, I think it would be, you know, quickly we would move into all of them and then even more into like, like text peer review. It can be tough. Not everyone should be able to do it, right? So if, especially if you're like, if your goal is to be like very scrupulous about deviations from the pre-registration to the actual analysis, the person needs to understand both texts in a pretty high level. So I wouldn't do it for like physics paper, for example. Although I am like a scientist and I have done open science stuff. It needs to be in your field, in my opinion. The, the other piece about this too is that we'll be able to iterate and change too. So like if we start out with everybody and it's like clear that's not working, then you know we can restrict it. But like this is thinking of like the first version, like is it better to start it off restricted? And even thinking yeah, of like so. claimed, claimed like how, how do we verify that the verifiers? Yeah, yeah. Field? Like the mechanism now would probably be have they claimed a paper. So we could restrict it to only authors who have claimed papers, um, but we probably need to talk to OSF to see if the people they're sending over are going to be like authors of papers that could be claimed. Um, yeah, it's just it's tough to think about. I think you should start restricted because you you say we can try be be open during the first time first stages, but there is really no way for you to tell that someone is not a diligent. Uh, validate it right they'll just leave a comment yes this is good what if kobe could we do like a referral link from osf like if you come from osf you're automatically eligible to be a verifier but if you just sign up on research hub and find it there then you can't be hmm. maybe i need to look into the referral module i'm thinking maybe it will work but maybe it's not going to be the best thing because that implies only new users you know um that have joined what about the existing users and uh yeah i'm not sure i, I gotta think about that but i think i think it is good to restrict it as well because now i'm thinking like uh, about like reputations of sites so a reputation is like you have it until you don't so it's like once someone says like oh research hub is crap then it's hard to build the trust again so i think what anton is saying is probably true good point anton what if you do some sort of maybe not even you but maybe osf whenever you mix uh, whenever you meet next time if you ask them if they can do some sort of test 
or even the onboarding procedure that briefly describes what are these free batches, how to properly look for them, you know, the whole uh, thing, and then gives you like a short term test. That's whether you understood this. Yeah, totally. And and we're thinking of like um, designing something uh, like a user experience thingy and putting it into like a clickable prototype. So we're not going to actually like implement anything, but creating some like a mock, putting it in front of people, including yourself, getting your thoughts and um, iterating based on that before we implement anything. So what you just said, Anton, about like whether putting some like statements and seeing if it makes sense. Yeah, like uh, we're going to see how people react to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's it. I think that's all I have for you guys. Thank you for the feedback. So uh, the last thing that I want to bring up today is um, we're about to release the new hypothesis feature. And so, yeah, in order for, before we like start to spread the word about it big time, we wanted to get like some initial content, like even Anton, the conversation that we were having today on the message board. Like I was thinking, like, I, I literally just listed out a hypothesis with some sources, you know, in that one comment. So um, we'll do, like, an extra, like, maybe, like, 1,000 RSC bonus or something. Like, if anybody posts a hypothesis, we'll just ship you some more RSC to help get that initial content going. So that way, when we spread it, like, there's a couple posts up, and they're, like, you know, pretty decent quality. Um, so, yeah, if anybody wants to post a hypothesis or add sources, we'll end up I, I don't have like an official number of RSC, but it'll be a lot just to like help get that feature going. Okay. Will you announcing the moment in, in the Slack or should we kind of look for it? Well, what, what do you guys, what would be motivational to you? Like maybe like I was in our power user program, it was like a hundred RSC a post. And I think this is a lot harder. So maybe like, like a thousand for a hypothesis and then another like 50 for every uh, source under it or something? No, no I, I was just interested in like uh, when you release the feature, feature the like how it's announced, uh, not the, anything about the reward. Oh, totally sorry, my fault. <laughs> so uh, what we'll do is send an email to the email list. Um, Pat also built a really cool feature uh, for this uh, specifically where now there will be like a notification uh, basically like a new feature kind of like to draw your it'll, attention to the hypothesis. Yeah. In the app itself, there'll be like a new, it'll say new and then like, you'll visually see, Oh, what is this thing? And then we'll have some explainer, some description there. So, yeah. We can post in the community chat and tweet about it too. Cool. On that note, yeah. I would love to receive more emails with such have. I receive like delay now. <laughs> right now, I don't know how to increase it, but if you are concerned about sending too much emails, that's that that's constant that doesn't apply to me. So you think we should send more emails, Nami? To me. <laughs> Just to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll start writing some love letters or something. <laughs> Um, yeah, we don't send out a ton of like marketing emails, but if you guys think we should up that, then I can uh, start composing more of those. I always just find them kind of obnoxious, but that's just you're my cool. thing. You're cool. You you send them. Yeah, I think we could. just occasionally. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, we can start doing that like monthly or something. We could do some content kind of thing, like I don't know, curated content of the month or something, something content based would probably be useful. People. Mm. We had that. <laughs> Permits library, but just the research hub, right? Totally. Cool. So yeah, I'll think about that a little bit more and coordinate with you, Pat, about what we can put in like yeah. this letter type thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that's all I had. Do you guys have anything for us this week? Just as a general comment, this move towards really incentivizing some productive and different work from just posting content and comments uh, is exciting, at least to me. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really looking forward to how that turns out. And congrats on collaboration with OSF. It's definitely a start. Yeah, thank you. I, I totally agree, too, where like the long term vision of like paying for peer review is super uh, like I think that's where the future is going. And um, even just like in our couple of calls with the OSF team, 
like they've done this a million times and they know like the best way to like slowly dip your toes into water and like how to like even phrase crypto rewards to scientists where like it makes sense so yeah we're we're and it's all it's thanks to anton and nami for inviting me to the sips conference that's where it came from so yeah you should be sure. ridiculous so thank you so much and yeah we're crazy lucky they seem super super diligent talented nice Pleasure. Well, I, I think I've been asking for sure. <laughs> great. Take the credit. Take the credit, man. Yeah. <laughs> Already got it. Cool. All right. Well, I think that's all we have. So thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thanks for joining. Bye. See you. See you.